Hi, I'm Mike Sargent, and this is Arise on Screen. I'm designing a machine that will allow us to break every message every day instantly. He was a mathematician, logician, and computer scientist who became the ultimate code breaker and helped the Allies win World War II. Benedict Cumberbatch stars as Alan Turing, whose great accomplishments were eventually overshadowed by his secret life in The Imitation Game. I gave you what the streets felt like, what it sounded like, tasted like, smelled like, all in that album. It's and been I 20 years since Nas's seminal rap album hit the scene. Now, a new documentary looks at the creation of a classic that changed the face of hip hop forever. We talk to the writer and director of Time, is Illmatic. Each time you see it with a different audience, it has a new life. It's a unique experience all into itself. We're the elitist of the elite. Up high! Whoa, hey now! Those crazy penguins, Skipper, Kowalski, Rico, and Private are back, and this time they're helping save the planet. The world's most hilarious covert birds return in The Penguins of Madagascar. All this and more on Arise on Screen. Hello, I'm Mike Sargent, and welcome to Arise On Screen, your global home for films both on screen and behind the scenes. Today, I'm joined by an artist and international film critic, Kiera spagnoli Gabardi, and, of course, the incomparable Bobby Rivers. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> so, uh, I just want to say, before we get to the films, you know, in light of what just happened uh, this week with yes. the Ferguson, it brings to mind Fruitvale Station which is also based on something awful. Now, you had something you wanted to say about that, Bobby. An excellent film, and, and I thought about Fruitvale Station you know, d during the events of the Ferguson d mm -hmm. uh, decision. One of the, the powers of film, the film can not only entertain, we can, with, at, with film, focus on a social issue and enlighten minds, which Fruitvale Station does. I agree with you 100%, and, and I have to say, Ryan Coogler, who, and it's his first feature film, I thought it, he did a fantastic job that really made you feel uh, quite a bit and, and, and bring back that anger that people are feeling now yes. as a result. And I have to say one more thing, too, that, Kiara, you said you've never seen the film, but no. these are the kind of films that don't get to play in other countries, which, you know, later in the show, they, I have an interview with uh, the ADIFF, which is the African Diaspora International ah. Film Festival, and part of their initiative is bringing black films to Europe. Excellent. Which is something I hope to, to see more of. Because and it, yeah, and it's very interesting to see how fiction sometimes anticipates reality. It's uh, uh, very uh, disquieting, yeah. it's interesting, but, but disquieting. there are right. several examples. So first up, we're going to talk about those crazy penguins from the Penguins of <laughs> Madagascar. This time, they've joined forces with an undercover organization called the North Wind to help stop the world from being destroyed. Okay, boys, this is it. The mission we've been preparing for our entire lives. Remain calm, penguins. You are now under the protection of the North Wind. Private, dibble me. I'm an outlaw. So, uh, first of all, I have to say, I, I, re I thought they were the best characters in the Madagascar films. And yes. I didn't even realize that they had a TV series. I didn't know that either. Yeah, but Neither this is separate I. from that. But, but I really, really enjoyed it. Now, now Kiara, you, you really enjoyed this film, too. Absolutely. I thought there was a mixture between Ian Fleming and Lewis Carroll. It was like James Bond through the looking glass. Mm -hmm. It was ludicrous, incredibly witty. Uh, you just switched from one scenery to the next. It was uh, incredibly subtle also in some punchlines. You, you, mm -hmm. If you take a close attention, uh, some, uh, some actors' names are thrown here and there. That Kevin Bacon, that was, that was Drew Barrymore. Right. So. That, that was a lot of fun. And Bobby, you, of course, I, know, I went with you, so well, I know I, you You know, it. I did not think I was going to be laughing. I laughed a lot. It was very enjoyable. I think this feature is perfect family entertainment. You know, where the parents want to take the kids out, kids 13 and under. Family time. This is the this, this is a feature to I, see. I agree with you 100. percent And what I enjoyed about it is, like you said, it's for if as an adult I enjoyed the humor, I got the jokes. Yes. That would go way over a kid's head. Right. And and I enjoyed the plotting of it. I mean, there were things happened. I had no idea what was going to happen. I love next. John exactly. Malkovich's voice work oh, as the villain. Oh, great. broke me up. Yes. And I also enjoyed Benedict Cumberbatch as the uh, yes. the wolf, the yeah. leader of the pack. There. It's as his it were. year. It's yes, his it moment. Is. Yes. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about another film from John. Um, from Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. And uh, so stay tuned to 
arise on screen. What is it that we're really doing? We're going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Coming up, the true story of British mathematician, computer scientist, and World War II codebreaker, Alan Turing. Benedict Cumberbatch and Kira Knightley star in The Imitation Game, next here on Arise On Screen. Maybe thinks that one of us is a Soviet spy. You've got more secrets than the best of them. One of my favorite moments on the show was interviewing the author Taya Selassie. She wrote the New York Times bestseller, Ghana Must Go, and she actually coined the phrase Afropolitan. And I feel like in part what this show speaks to is the Afropolitan audience. They're African, they're traveled, they're cosmopolitan, they're interested in the diaspora. That's what we deliver here, and Taya in many ways was the perfect embodiment of what I want our viewer to represent. Of course, that's what you're working on. But you also haven't got anywhere with it. If you had, you wouldn't be hiring cryptographers out of university. You need me a lot more than I need you. I, I like solving problems, Commander. And Enigma is the most difficult problem in the world. No, Enigma isn't difficult. It's impossible. The Americans, the Russians, the French, the Germans, everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. Good. Let me try, and we'll know for sure, won't we? Benedict Cumberbatch stars in The Imitation Game, the true life story of Alan Turing, the wartime codebreaker and computer genius who led the charge to crack the German Enigma code that eventually helped win World War II. Welcome back to Arise on Screen. Now, I have to say, this was a powerful, powerful Man, movie. Isn't it? And, and, and Alan Turing himself is an enigma. Right. There's so many things that work about this film. Now, Bobby, you came away saying that you were blown away by this movie. I would give The Imitation Game an Oscar nomination for Best Picture right now. Mm. And I hope that uh, Mr. Cumberbatch is in the running for Best Actor. This was based on history. It, this is wartime and gay history mm -hmm. that deserves attention that is still relevant today. Uh, very much so. And you know, what's interesting, Cumberbatch in an interview said that he was so taken with this character that towards the end of filming, there was a scene he just couldn't stop crying because of what happened to this man. Yes. Uh, and and I, I was very much moved to realize how much, how many lives he saves and how much he changed the world I by creating co the first computer, essentially. It's, it, you liked it too, didn't you, Carla? I loved it, and I also agree Cumberbatch de uh, deserves a, an Academy Award. I grew up in a British school, but uh, we weren't taught this part of history, which is uh, pretty much ignored by many, so it's, uh, it's very moving to see how it is. cinema and, and can be revealing. It's a piece of history that was, was kept under wraps for over right. 50 years. So I have to say, you would recommend? Absolutely, go see it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes, yes. I, I'd say definitely go see it. Our next film is Horrible Bosses 2, the sequel to the 2011 comedy hit Horrible Bosses. The original cast is back, and instead of working for bosses, they become their own bosses. Boom, marker drop. Kidnapping. That's kidnapping. With one more P it is, that's kidnapping. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about kidnapping. Think about it, okay, first of all, we kidnap Rex, that's right? right? Yeah. We get money from Bert, yeah. we the save the money. business. What do you know about executing a kidnapping? But what do you mean? You get you zip, zip, zip ties. Oh, jeez. We're not gonna kidnap anyone. Come on, this guy's a master business prick. He's at the top of his game. We need to figure out. Boy, look what we got. Is that a Sharpie? And hilarity ensues. <laughs> <laughs> the original cast is back. So I have to say now, this is a movie that I like the first one enough. Uh, right. Uh, and I like the cast. Right. But I think the cast Probably. makes this work more than anything else. I would, I would totally agree with you because I think basic, essentially that these three guys are a modern day version of the Three Stooges with Jason Bateman as Mo. Mm -hmm. And it's a verbal gross out. It's not a date movie. It's more a boys night out type movie. Mm -hmm. You got Jennifer Aniston making new friends, talking dirty, really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, you as a woman, what did you think of this? Because I don't think you were I was amused. very, very bored. Oh. Uh, I found Horrible Bosses 2 is what the Italians would call a heated up soup. 
<laughs> because there are, they try to get all the elements that work the first time, mm -hmm. but they're not fresh anymore. So I, it doesn't I, I work have to very say, well. And, and for me, the relentless stupidity, of, especially of the Charlie Day character, <laughs> after a while, it drains you. It does, and it gets a little bit tiring. Yes, it's right. too so much. while I did laugh, and I really love Jason Bateman. You know? I, yeah. And ironically, this is the third film now that uh, Jason Sudeikis and Jennifer Aniston have done, because mm -hmm. they did Horrible Bosses, they did uh, We Are the Millers, which right. was great, right. and now this. Yeah. And so. this one, would, you know, I, I liked his first, uh, Jason Bateman, Bad Words. Much better. Much oh, better. Oh, yes, I, it was much amazing better. in that. So, you would not recommend? No, please. Don't nah. waste your money. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to move on. We have more show to do, but I want to thank you both for being here. Thank and you. it's like the old Arise family. Oh, uh, isn't yes. it? Back yeah. again. And uh, so for those watching, please stay tuned and we'll be back with more movies here on Arise on Screen. <laughs>